Center uh, has been uh, shot and uh, uh, police are, are at this moment, they've cordoned off uh, the area and we're getting reports that when the attack took place, no member of his uh, family were present uh, in that uh, house. The GSU officer we're told uh, is still under, uh, we're still receiving treatment. We still don't know uh, his condition, but our reporter Elvis Kosge is going to join us shortly and tell us uh, any kind of update uh, from Sugoi. Once again, reports reaching us is the Deputy President William Ruto Sugoi home uh, came under attack uh, a, a few minutes ago uh, from armed gangsters who shot one of his GSU officers. Those are, of course, some of the G GSU officers who are manning that uh, premises. Police have at this moment cordoned off uh, the area. Elvis Kosge is going to tell us uh, more shortly. But for now, speaking about security issues, the Interior Cabinet Secretary or the Acting Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi, uh, together with his counterpart, uh, that is from uh, the Defence, Rachel Omamo, uh, had come up with some sort of reaction to what NASA leader Raila Odinga, uh, some statement that he made yesterday, alluding to the fact uh, that uh, KDF, are interfering with the elections. Let's listen in to what these two uh, cabinet secretaries had to say in Kisumu. Accompanied by my colleague, uh, Dr. Fred Matiangi, uh, the acting minister of internal security, to respond to a statement that has been made by the National Super Alliance. I will read the statement in extenso and thereafter we'll take one or two questions. I read as follows, this is a statement from the Ministry of Defense of the Republic of Kenya. The ministry has noted with concern the allegations contained in a statement issued by the National Super Alliance on the 28th of July, 2017. The statement alleges that there is a plan by the Jubilee administration and top military commanders to rig the elections by disenfranchising a section of Kenyans and also prohibiting the participation of NASA agents in polling stations within central Kenya. The ministry wishes to state as follows. NASA agents in polling stations within central Kenya. The ministry wishes to state as follows. That is a while back, and that was uh, the Defence uh, Cabinet Secretary Rachel Omamo. Uh, of course, she was flanked by the Interior Cabinet, the Acting Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi, and they were reacting to that uh, statement that was released yesterday by NASA leader. Uh, Rilo Dingo allegations that the military, uh, that the KDF are interfering with the election. Let me just start with you, Kakai, once again. You've talked about a season of propaganda. It seems also it's a season when, you know, security issues need to be taken seriously. Yeah, you know, security issues, uh, I keep saying that uh, uh, Kenyans have not been hit very seriously by security concerns. Mm -hmm. In fact, what we saw in terms of uh, post-election violence yeah. in 2007 and 2008 is, mm -hmm. is basically a shadow of uh, skirmishes compared to what other countries have gone through uh, in terms of security concerns. So we have had an opportunity mm -hmm. to work in Liberia. And when you look at these countries that are struggling to come from post-conflict uh, war situations, mm -hmm. security is not an issue you should uh, joke or play ar around with. Mm -hmm. And that's why you are seeing the, the Minister of uh, Defense coming out strongly mm -hmm. as an institution saving the face of the KDF. If anything happens right now in this country, we will not ask where NASA was. Mm -hmm. Neither are we going to ask where Jubilee is, because no. it's not their mandate or responsibility to take care mm -hmm. of Kenyans. So we'll be asking where was KDF, and where was the police, and where was uh, the other security agents. So I think security is very important. We have to take it extremely serious. Mm -hmm. It's a very sad scenario of uh, situation what has happened in um, in the deputy president's uh, home mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in, in Eldoret. It's, it's, a, it's a very sad scenario. We may not want to comment so much on what's really happening mm -hmm. uh, because we don't know the investigations how they are going to unfold yeah. uh, because there are people there working on it. Mm -hmm. But it just shows that as much as we are looking at issues of propaganda, mm -hmm. let Kenyans be very careful with these issues and we should not take security for granted in mm -hmm. this country.
Before I come to you, John and uh, and, and and Brian, uh, let's listen into what the the full statement by the Defence Cabinet Secretary, uh, Rachel Omamo. Well, the clip still has issues, but we're going to play it to you once we get the complete statement from the defense CS. But Brian, sure. you know, time and again, from the speech there again, we've had the CS for, for defense together with that of interior. You know, they've dismissed this statement that have been made by NASA. Do you think it's about time they should also, you know, sit back and do some sort of investigation? Uh, I don't think uh, it, 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 that, that should uh, be the standard uh, procedure for them to do mm -hmm. uh, because uh, they are the incumbent. Uh, Rachel is part of the incumbent and is part of the government. And uh, coming out to admit that there might be some uh, elements of truth in what NASA is saying mm -hmm. would be actually uh, partially admitting that that could be true. But and you can't expect the government to say you that. You don't expect the and, government and, and to do that. And there's something I want you to talk mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Actually, the clip is ready. I want you to talk about the body language of the yes. devolution. I mean, mm. the defense CS. But mm -hmm. for now, let's listen in to what she had to say. Okay. And necessarily risks the safety of these officers and their families. Furthermore, such disclosure may be exploited by hostile entities such as Al-Shabaab to the detriment of these officers and their families. There ends my statement. We will take questions. I have no idea what letters NASA is referring to me, referring to, because they have not shown them to me. They have not submitted them to me for my scrutiny and verification. But I want to say this, and to say this without fear of contradiction, that these allegations that have been made by NASA are reckless. They are divisive. They are dangerous. They are intended to create fear and despondency within the citizenry of this country and within the Kenya Defense Forces. They are unwarranted. They are scurrilous. And we reject them in every particular. Kenyans are entitled to exercise their constitutional right to choose candidates of their choice without fear without apprehension. This is a right that we all must stand up for. And it is a right that the Kenya Defense Forces and all security forces are mandated to protect under the Constitution. We will discharge our, constitution law, uh, our constitutional mandate properly, lawfully, and in the best interests of the people of this republic. And my message to the Kenya Defense Forces today, you are respected, you are valued by the people of Kenya. Stand up and discharge your constitutional mandate without fear or intimidation. I thank you. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I've said the Constitution sets out the mandate of the Kenya Defense Forces. It is the duty of every soldier to discharge that mandate. And that mandate does not include rigging the elections. We do not intend to rig the elections. We do not intend to do anything unlawful. And we reject any allegations of that nature. That's it. Uh, all right, last one, uh, b before I add something, maybe let me just say this before you ask your question. Uh, I, I just want to emphasize what I have done several times before in a number of um, uh, public activities. The government does not conduct elections. We do not conduct elections. Elections are conducted by the REBC, according to the law. Our responsibility in the security sector is to facilitate and support the REBC to deliver on its mandate. And IBC has pronounced itself several times on a number of issues related to how they intend to conduct the elections, what they expect from us, and what we will do in that respect. Everything we are doing, we will do according to the guidance of IEBC and according to the law. And we want to ask the people of Kenya, because this is a fantastic country and we are so grateful that we are blessed with what, such a great nation. Let us go about our businesses peacefully and calmly. There have even been claims 
before that people are leaving certain parts of, of, of the country, like uh, Kisumu here. I have just had a meeting with the security committee of the county and the region. The regional co commissioner is here. The entire security committee in the county, led by the county commissioner Kisumu, is here. No one is leaving anywhere. There is nothing of that kind. We have an impartial, professional, competent, respected security sector. Our interest is to do what the law allows us to do or the law mandates us to do. And what my colleague has said in respect of the uh, Kenya Defense Forces, it is unfortunate that our country, five decades after independence, we would be here, two ministers, saying something that should be a straightforward issue of common sense. Honestly, we should be spending time on a matter of common sense with the kind of respect we have for our defense forces. Now they are being dragged into irrelevant uh, arguments and into politics where they ought not to go to. We want to ask the people of Kenya. We are 10 days away from voting day. Let us remain calm. Let's go about our activities. The country is secure and safe. We will all play our role effectively. And please, ignore some of these things so that we can just be peaceful. Ignore some of these things. It, 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 there are no basis. Let's just carry on with the business that we must carry on with. Yes, you had a question. Mm -hmm. The NASA is referring. Actually, the country is just nine days away from the 8th of August uh, debt. And uh, this is just part of the statement by the Defence Cabinet Secretary, Rachel Omamo. And she said that the statement that was made by NASA leader Raila Odinga was reckless, divisive and dangerous. Brian, once again, this statement comes just barely a day, actually hours after that of uh, the NASA leader. Don't you think it's prudent, you know, for the CES and the government as a uh, whole to do some sort of investigation before releasing this kind of statement? Uh, you know, I believe Rachel, Rachel Omama, Omamo is actually the person who is actually in charge of matters of defense in this country. Mm -hmm. And the KDF squarely lies under her command and, uh, you know, it's a baby actually, so to speak. And uh, I think you can see the body language, how much worked up she is and uh, she is not known uh, commonly to appear on media to dish out some information and share some express expressions regarding matters of security. I don't know, uh, some people say she is camera shy <laughs> but I want to say that uh, you could see how she was uh, breathing fire, trying to counter uh, some of those allegations or per se those allegations by NASA. That says something in terms of uh, her trying to assert herself within that docket because some people have been accusing her of being a you know laid back when it comes to matters of national security mm -hmm. but maybe this is time this is the time she's making a statement and also Matiangi imposing us himself also as a new kid on the block when it comes matter of matters of security is also a new way of actually trying to uh, prove a point to the Jubilee government or the appointing authority that he is up to the game in terms of uh, being in charge of the matters of national security complementing the matters of defense in the this country but the place of uh, the place of uh, the, uh, investigation as you have asked has no place at this point mm -hmm. this is uh, at a time when we need to when people are going bare knuckle against each other every information passed against you is met with the same kind of measure and uh, this is the same scenario this is the same setup that we are seeing use of mm -hmm. where Omamo and Matiangi are coming out guns blazing to counter any statement that perhaps might depict uh, these instruments as being not independent as they are supposed to be because you know the ministries or the sectors are supposed to run without interfering with the matters of elections mm -hmm. and this is the statement that the two guys are trying to make in this mm -hmm. country that they are not working under any sort of influence or they are not trying to work in any machination to ensure that the that the jubilee actually hands power mm -hmm. uh, to the jubilee or to the incumbent government to protect what they are sitting on as government officials of course the two cs's made that mm -hmm. statement while in kisumu it's another area that has been been labeled as a hotspot come mm. August 8th. And uh, from this statement there, uh, Brian here has put it rightly that from the body language, you'll say that the defense here might look like she's worked up. That's sure. what you say. Yeah, absolutely. So to, let's, to come back, let's come back to our earlier, to our earlier <laughs> comment where you talked I, about I, I, Raila Odinga uh, making traction out of yes, the, uh, the and country. Yes, uh, I have three things to say here. Mm -hmm. One, that Listening to the minister, the two ministers talking, yeah. uh, you can see clearly what Rachel Obama is doing. She's mm -hmm. a very 
a well-spoken, eloquent, brilliant person, and she puts her points very clear. Mm -hmm. And she's defending her ministry, and rightly so, in terms of what their mandate is. And she's reminding Kenyans, look, we are neutral. We're not even supposed to participate in, in the electoral process by even voting. So where on earth? And she's reminding them, please, one of your terms of reference is to guard. Your terms of reference has got nothing to do with to rig election. Now, that's one thing. The other thing is, as the, if I was the IBC chairman, I'll be laughing at the whole of this scenario. Mm -hmm. Why? It's because under the Kenyan law, this is the first election that we are going to have which is computer generated and approved. Right from the polling station. Mm -hmm. And this is where IBC ought to have been even there themselves, trying to say, hey, look here, guys, mm -hmm. there's no rigging here. You know, Kenyans are not aware that there's no ballot stuffing anymore. Mm -hmm. These things are not going to work. This election you are going to win because you won, or you are going to lose because you lost. Mm -hmm. Look at how the elections are streaming from the polling stations. Yeah. It's all through computer generated. They move from the polling stations, they go to the constituency telling center. At the constituency telling center, all your agents should be there. It's computer based. It's moving from the constituency telling center to the county telling center, mm -hmm. from the county telling center to the national telling center. It's all computer generated. So IBC is looking at all this whole and wondering what really happened. But now, the question no. that the Kenyans will be asking <laughs> is whether these systems will fail. Mm -hmm. Systems are not going to fail. I'm not speaking for IBC. I don't work for IBC. Mm -hmm. But the mechanism that IBC has put in place give them credit for what they are going to do in terms of delivering the election. Mm -hmm. John. Yeah, uh, the issue of the military. Yeah. Has been a consistent issue uh, during this five-term year when uh, the government has been in office. You you will remember Raila raised the issue of military when he was uh, pushing mm -hmm. for our withdrawal from Somalia, something which he had signed together with Kibaki when they were in government. And uh, you can remember he pushed it so much so that when Obama came to Kenya, one mm -hmm. of the things that he had to address was that one, and he said, "You cannot." wish your president to, to fail. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why he was very candid on the opposition is because of the push that was there on the issue of military. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be very special affection between Raila and the military. Mm -hmm. Of course, all the way from 1982, as you remember. Mm -hmm. And what is, no, mm -hmm. what is happening here today, what is happening today here uh -huh. today is that uh, you are getting information from inside the higher ranks of military, yeah. which then you come and infuse mm -hmm. some propaganda in it. Uh, then you know that one kind of mm -hmm. even the military itself. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying is a very sensitive issue. Mm -hmm. Look, for example, you say that the military will take charge of spreading cholera in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I mean, surely. <laughs> then, mm -hmm. the other issue, you know, these are the issues that were there. Yeah. Is that uh, the mil uh -huh. No, it's true. Those Let's, issues were there. That, uh, that, I think you've delivered your point. That, that the issue of, just a minute, mm -hmm. that the issue of cutting water, for example, uh -huh. that's a, a function of the county government. Brian, to that briefly before, we go, to, before, yeah, before we go to IBC. Okay. Okay. I just want to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> I just want to deal with the issue that is actually trying to, you know, uh, engage us into. And that's the matters of 1992. Cool eight and two. all that, 8 or 2, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Uh, I think it is something so sensitive that uh, if we discuss it on a national TV, maybe it, it, it won't go well mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what we are trying to actually bring our country into a cohesive unit. But again, I also want also to echo the sentiments that he has said that uh, uh, matters of national security need not to be, you know, uh, to find any space in our political space. Because while we are trying to, to, to show two sides of the coin which need to operate within a very neutral perspective, the once we introduce the aspect of the national security, especially the KDF, then we shall be actually uh, uh, almost tearing this country apart. I want to say this, uh, he talked about several countries which have gone through a very dangerous path. Mm -hmm. The Liberias of this country, Gambias and, those, and so on and so on, Ivory Coast and so on and so on. I I think, as he said, this country has never seen the black side or the dark side of insecurity. I think we have always, 207 was just a scratch because if security is not handled well, especially from the top command, and if it's politicized, I think that is the worst thing you can see in a country, which is actually priding itself as one of the best managed countries in terms of democracies in Africa. Yeah. And I also want to echo some sentiments that I heard the other day that, uh, uh, you know, the opposition, NASA is ready if to go there. 
was it the Gambian way who went to swear their, their president in a different country, Tanzania? Mm -hmm. I think that's a very dangerous topic. Mm -hmm. It's a very dangerous trend. And Thank if you, we can even think uh -huh. about it, uh -huh. I think then we are killing the very gains that we have made as a country ever uh -huh. since we started cultivating the multi-party democracy. In yeah. this country. Let's proceed on to something different. And another body that has been on the spot this week has been the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. Of course, IABC has been on the spot for the last is it, three, four months, especially from the opposition. Opinion polls have clearly indicated that members of the opposition, actually supporters of the opposition, are whooping about 80% don't believe in the electoral body. They've been accused, you know, of so many things. One among them that stood out is that the lack of proper communication. And it seems the IBC chair was reacting to that and he had a, a kind of a state of preparedness of IBC speech yesterday. Let's listen into some of the things he raised yesterday at the Bombers of Kenya. The IEBC chairman invited stakeholders in the August 8th polls that included political parties, civil society, the international community, the business community, and faith-based organizations to critically assess the commission's readiness for the general election. The opposition has claimed that in the 2013 elections, an extra 2 million ghost voters participated in the presidential election. The IEBC has put in place a foolproof system that will not only identify voters biometrically, but will also ensure that the ones who are passed on will not turn up on the August 8th election. There have also been concerns about a possible collision between political parties and the Dubai-based Al Gurea printing firm, which won the tender to print ballot papers, including those for the presidential election. The opposition moved to court seeking to have a different company print the presidential ballot papers after claiming the ruling Jubilee's presidential candidate Uhuru Kenyatta met with officials from the company. Last week, the Court of Appeal overturned a high court ruling that had directed IBC to retender the printing of the presidential ballot papers. Today I want to assure you that the ballot papers which we have printed for this election are very advanced in features and that will make it impossible to duplicate and they are not prone to any form of uh, ballot stuffing. On Thursday, IEBC led a delegation to Dubai to witness the printing of the presidential ballot papers. However, Third Way Alliance Kenya Party leader and presidential candidate Dr. Ekuru Aukot says his agent was not able to establish how many ballot papers had been printed prior to the due diligence visit and the party could not tell for sure that there was no mischief. By the time the observers reached the printing press at 3 p.m. on 27 July 2017, about 95%, if not more, of the printing work for the presidential ballot papers had been completed and packed in various pellets ready for export to Nairobi. No agent therefore supervised the printing and we could not tell for sure what, that there were no mischief. In my view, the issues raised by Third Way Alliance are not candid and not being genuine to the Kenyans. You see, at the time the ballots were being printed, our officers were on the ground, and the, the observers who were there were taken through the entire process. There's no monkey business here. It's a transparent process, and each and every ballot paper will be accounted for. So the idea of asking us to send our uh, representatives to go to Dubai to witness the packaging of ballot papers in Dubai it's hogwash. IEBC has printed 19.6 million ballot papers for the presidential election, plus an extra 196,000 as replacements for spoiled papers. IEBC says it will ensure transparency and accountability of its staff and that returning officers risk prosecution and jail should they engage in attempts to seal the vote. In case of fraud or attempts by voters to vote twice, the device, of course, will be able to alert us thus barring the said person from voting twice, that if they breach the code of conduct and the electoral offenses, they'll be prosecuted like any other Kenyan. And this time round, the Electoral Offenses Act has very strict fines. In fact, I think the minimum fine is one million shillings and one year imprisonment. As a commission, we shall not protect a staff who make Kenyans not have a free, fair, and credible election. The commission says IEBC servers have been firewalled against cyber attacks. We have engaged cyber security experts to ensure 
that we protect our systems from hacking by putting in place a parallel backup system, also known as hot site. The Commission says it has put measures to guard against network failure during the transmission of results electronically. We have provided for satellite transmission in each of those centers, 290 telling centers at constituencies and the 47 counties. So in the worst case scenario, that anything happens, we should still be able to transmit results without a problem. The IABC will conduct a simulation of transmission of election results on Monday with all stakeholders. It's on that particular day that also the poll register will be available to all polling stations. Patrick Amimo, KTA News, at the Bombers of Kenya, Nairobi. Of course, we're going to discuss that story in detail, whether IEBC is well prepared or not. It is a discussion that many people are still having with just nine days to go to the general elections. But for now, let's revisit our breaking story once again, where reports that we are getting from Wasangishi is that the home of Deputy President William Ruto in Shugoi uh, came under attack a few minutes ago. The assailants uh, were told that, you know, outnumbered uh, the GSU officers manning uh, that house and they managed to shoot one of the officers. Uh, reports reaching us is that some of the assailants are still uh, within that house. But just to give us a clear picture of what, what is happening on the ground, we're now joined live by reporter Elvis Kosgay from Wasingishu. Elvis, what more can you tell us? Thank you, Yusuf. Uh, here to go currently, we can hear every exchange of gunfire between police officers and uh, the suspected gun, the, the gunmen who access the institution. What I can also report is that the Reke squad unit was also gained entry into the home of Deputy President William Bruto. And uh, what I can also see is a police chopper that is also uh, landing at, at Ugo here, Salvo constituency in Washington County. Uh, the motive of the attack currently, we are not so sure of what uh, the said visitors uh, who managed to access the home of Deputy President. And we are told it was like about an hour uh, after the Deputy President had left his home for Kitale, where they, uh, they had a Jubilee rally together with President Uhuru Kenyatta. So what we are seeing is that uh, security has been disturbed at this place. And so far, we can just hear heavy gunshots from inside, since we, cannot, we are not able to access uh, the home of the deputy president. Mm -hmm. Well, Elvis, can you confirm for us whether those gunmen are still within the house, within that premises? Sorry? Well, Elvis, can you hear me? I did ask you, we're getting reports that some of the gunmen are still holed up within uh, the DP's house. How true is that? Uh, Yusuf, uh, yeah, it's true. The gunmen have, have been holed inside the home of the deputy president, and they're suspected to be three uh, gunmen who are holed inside there. Also, I can see the police chopper just landing here at Sugoi as even gunshot sound go under. Uh, also, unconfirmed reports indicate that there are not three suspects. There are not three gunmen. Actually, we are also told there are seven. So we can see conflicting information the GSU from both. Uh, Manning at that premises was uh, shot, and uh, we're still not quite sure uh, his condition. But Elvis is going to join us shortly and give us a much more update on that developing uh, story. Let me just Come back in studio once again. Now, Brian, let's revisit the story we've discussed earlier with regards to IABC. Mm. Many people have been accusing IABC of lack of communication. You know, the IABC chair came out yesterday in almost an hour-long kind of a, a press briefing, alluding fear, laying fears mm. uh, that, you know, the elections are not going to be free and fair. First of all, how well prepared, prepared is IABC? Absolutely. That's a beautiful question, Yusuf. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, let me first say, 
that as good students of history, uh, you realize that uh, Kivuito was ECK mm -hmm. used to operate within a cocoon that nobody else understood what was doing. Mm -hmm. the, as, the aspect of communication was not well handled. Mm -hmm. But came uh, the time of Hassan, uh, the, of course they made it, uh, you know, both. They improved a little bit. But this one, I think to me, I can give them a, a little bit more you know, leverage compared mm -hmm. uh, to, to the previous one. Mm -hmm. But again, the question of whether IBC is prepared or not, I think I want to answer this question. No, I don't want to answer this question yes, in a yes or no manner, mm -hmm. but I want to use the PESA tool of analysis when it comes to IBC preparedness. Looking at the political aspect of it, of course we're asking ourselves whether there is a good political, uh, a, a political goodwill to conduct elections that I tell you, yes. Of course, when you look at the finances, IBC has never been able, has, ne has never complained about issues to do with underfunding. Mm -hmm. I think they, this is uh, one of the institutions that is highly funded and they have not uh, grappled with any issue of uh, in inadequacies when it comes to finances. Mm -hmm. Then when you look at the givers free and fair elections, then when you look at uh, the other uh, aspects in terms of logistics, you will realize that IBC in terms of personnel has put, uh, you know, up a good uh, set of operators in, terms, in terms of uh, personnel and the physical operators, gadgets and all that equipment as well mm -hmm. as the systems that are, you know, ready to roll out. The only issue that we had some uh, two weeks to three weeks ago, uh, you saw, if you remember, was the issue of the legal aspect vis a vis the aspect of the ballot papers. But this uh, having been done, and now as we are talking right now, they can land in our country anytime, or perhaps they have even landed in our country. I think that was the only gray area that perhaps we were was sending some shivers in our hearts whether, you know, we, we are going to really have some elections. Mm -hmm. But again, we have some gray area that need to be addressed because when you listen to somebody like uh, Ekuro or Kor saying that uh, the time we was checking in Dubai, all the papers had already been printed and nobody, you know, ascertained whether they were really done in a, in a supervision or in a supervisory so, uh, sort of manner. Mm -hmm. So I think that is an area that needs to be addressed, maybe from the printer and also the other stakeholders. But if you ask me as a person when the, whether IBC is prepared, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, yes, IBC is prepared. They only need to keep on updating Kenyans on, you know, in terms of communication mm -hmm. so that people on the no, because the moment you lock out people in terms of communication, mm -hmm. then you are creating a situation where people are guessing, people are, are, are you know, um, are giving out, uh, you know, predictions that perhaps are not in sync mm -hmm. with the reality on the ground. So that aspect of communication has to keep or has to be upped. It has mm -hmm. to keep on coming time to time so that Kenyans are in the know of what is happening in this country. Before I come to you, Kissinger and John, of course, this conversation, that those who are saying that we should not even have this kind of conversation, whether they're well prepared or not, <laughs> yes. because it's only IBC mm. who are going to, uh, of course, should I say, officiate or look mm. over the mm -hmm. uh, August 8th uh, election. Mm. And they're members of the position, you know, not just NASA. We've seen mm. even the Third World Alliance uh, leader there, Kuro, caught poking holes within uh, IEBC. Remember, time is ticking. It's ticking very fast. We just have nine days uh, to the general election. We'll continue with this discussion right here on the campus edition of choice 2017 we're going to take a very short break we'll be right back with much more Come on. this is ktn news Coca-Cola. 